Hello everyone, and uh, welcome to Reentry. The 1.0 milestone is getting close, and I wanted to, to take this moment to start talking a little bit about the future of Reentry. So first of all, the 1.0 uh, milestone is just the beginning. This means that what you currently see in the public bits, which is 0.99 at the moment, is going to be close to what you can expect for the 1.0 release. This will remove the early access flag of the game, and it's time to start thinking about what to do next. Uh, the entire re-entry universe is large. You can currently enjoy learning a lot of, about the early area of the US side of the race for space. You can get yourself strapped into the Mercury capsule and ride the brutal journey towards the unknown at the first American to reach space. The Mercury capsule is a simple spacecraft compared to the rest. However, its mechanics consists of a lot of various mechanical instruments used to travel to space with the unknown as a design factor. With a complex attitude maneuvering system and multiple manual backup systems, uh, you have everything uh, you need to kind of make sure that you have options if something goes wrong. In Gemini, the forces of spaceflight is more familiar. You've already been in space, you've already been in orbit in Mercury capsule, However, a lot is to be learned to understand how a lunar mission should be flown. With an advanced computer, the uh, onboard computer, uh, that can guide you through burns and rendezvous, you will have all the systems needed to maneuver in space and alter your trajectory, all to learn how to rendezvous and dock with another vehicle in space. The bridge to Apollo can be tamed, but with it comes hours of studying and understanding how to fly in space. After Gemini, we have Apollo, Apollo is the final step to land humans on the moon. With the knowledge learned from Gemini, you are ready to take on the challenge. First of all, you will need to not only know how to fly in space and how all of the orbital mechanics works, but also learn how to fly two very complex spacecrafts with thousands of switches to flip and a highly sophisticated computer to guide you. The computer itself is a very big uh, thing to learn but also all of the systems around the computer to make sure that you follow up a set trajectory to reach the moon and eventually land on it. And 1.0 was all about making this happen. Get the core systems developed and for me as a developer, learn how all of these um, kind of systems worked and the orbital mechanics worked and design a computer game that will let you experience this. This is why the 1.0 milestone was all about getting all the main systems, uh, meaning not every system that exists in a spacecraft with all relays and quirks from the real thing. This is not the scope of re-entry, but to let you experience the main aspect of uh, each program that the game currently uh, supports. So first of all, uh, when I set out the journey, I had uh, five main goals uh, in mind. And obviously the first one was to reach space in Mercury. And the second goal was to rendezvous and dock with Agena uh, in Gemini. And then, of course, landing on the moon in uh, an Apollo uh, command module and, uh, and the lunar module. And then last, test the feasibility of maybe adding VR support and multiplayer modes uh, post the 1.0 milestone. What 1.0 will be on its release is far beyond what I ever imagined this game could turn out to be when I first started writing the first lines of code. A lot of this would never have happened if it wasn't for you. The test pilots with thousands of hours of testing, uh, different codes and, and modules glued together with duct tape and countless of iterations of the same old bugs that kept up showing up. Uh, the community and the moderators been running it with me and the overwhelming flow of feedback, requests and bug reports from you, you who are, you know, playing the game. Obviously not everything is perfect. Many systems can, can and will still evolve. Uh, some rough edges can still be t tuned and tamed and some important systems are even missing. But the design goal was to get the core systems needed to perform a full lunar mission in place, where realistic procedures and, uh, and manuals could be used to get you there, but kind of in a gamified manner. And that's kind of the key concept of, of re-entry. It's a realistic simulator, but in kind of a gamified manner. It's the intersection between a high fidelity simulator and a game. So 
a first step for many uh, of you uh, to experience uh, spaceflight comes through maybe re-entry. And uh, even some of you have decided to, you know, use what you've learned in re-entry uh, to take the next step into an even higher fidelity and realistic simulator. So I just want to take this moment to just say thank you for being part of this long journey with me and I'm proud to present to you the current version of the game and what it has become. I hope this has been an immersive but also an educational experience for many of you. Today we are going to look into the next phase. So the goal of re-entry was always to let you fly and operate the various spacecraft that exist. The wide aspects of spacecraft used in manned missions has been the main focus and I wish to expand on this vision. So first and foremost, it's important to let you know that this is not the end of uh, development for Mercury, Gemini and Apollo. I wish to start the journey to a 2.0 by refining some rough edges and improved systems currently available today and keep fighting the bugs that you report. This is why I've decided to start a 2.0 journey by introducing um, some of the new things that you will you, know, you will see in this video and uh, I'm not going to kind of dive too deep into this right now but uh, you will soon see. So one of the first topics that we've been looking into lately is uh, uh, virtual reality and support for VR and uh, as many of you know the old VR implementation was uh, uh, made as a research thing to figure out if I could learn how and if it was even possible to add VR support in in this game. Uh, the scenes and, and how everything is set up is, is very complex, so it doesn't really work to directly use the, tra the traditional VR tools to be able to support it. So uh, I'm very happy to see the results of the first VR implementation that you all saw in the, the early access rounds and as it was taking shape. So, uh, the old VR implementation was then scrapped and, and deleted and uh, moved into a separate branch, uh, which are you know accessible uh, from the Steam and Betas tab. If you go in there and you select virtual reality, you will be able to to find it and, and play around with it. And in that version, you have access to all of the spacecrafts in the entry with that preliminary implementation. However. Uh, the new uh, VR implementation was recently uh, rebooted uh, from scratch, where I'm taking all of those learnings that I had back from the research phase uh, and put it into uh, a new implementation. Uh, currently, you will be able to get into VR uh, in the main branch uh, for Mercury only. And as we progress towards the 1.0 milestone, you will see that this evolves uh, more and more uh, you might even see some Gemini bits and maybe even some Apollo bits as I work on the final uh, journey towards 1.0. However, the main VR development cycles will happen uh, on the journey uh, towards 2.0. So after 1.0, I'm going to re-dive into VR and uh, make that even more stable and, and figure out how to implement VR on the rest of the modules. Uh, a second thing that we've been looking into is uh, multiplayer. Uh, so uh, before the the I think it was maybe two years or three years back, we started seeing uh, me experimenting with VR uh, with the uh, with the multiplayer. Uh, so we saw that the first module that was added was the Mercury Control Center, where mission controllers could join. Uh, uh, an astronaut who was flying the, the Mercury capsule uh, <clears throat> as mission controllers and operate uh, the missions from the control room. Uh, multiple players could be mission controllers and monitor telemetry, communicate with the astronaut and you know behave as mission controllers. We saw that this technical preview was evolved into uh, a similar module but for Apollo where the uh, really beautiful model made by Paolo uh, uh, is fully rendered and interactive uh, where you can you know join the room walk around in a museum like experience and see how the mission control room actually looked like 
Uh, the beautiful, uh, beautiful thing here is that all the projectors, the, the monitors, the desk, the screens, the intercoms, and all those things are are quite functional. However, uh, this has been uh, uh, preliminary testing as well. So uh, after 1.0, we will see that uh, a lot of more development cycles and, and more focus will be received on these two multiplayer modes. Uh, the new thing that uh, you know I've seen requests from before is uh, co-op. What about multiple players in the same cockpit? And the reason for not having any co-op things in uh, or multiplayer things for mission control in Germany is that I wanted to reserve that program to start experimenting with uh, Germany co-op. This means that you will be able to. Uh, sit inside a Gemini cockpit with your friends and uh, execute missions and rendezvous with uh, Gina and even dock with it to execute those missions together. Um, this module has been uh, started and uh, I've been going into kind of the first technical research phase of this and uh, the first demo that I'm going to show you now is Gemini Co-op so stay tuned. So I'm now connected to the Petris game a session created by uh, the other player. The other player is going to be the master, uh, which means that it's, uh, the role of the other player is going to be the commander of the spacecraft, while I who joined the room is going to be the pilot. Keep in mind that this is the first version of uh, Gemini Co-op and uh, this is just me researching and everything is currently in the research and development uh, department. And I've only been working on this here and there during cold freezes and testing um, for the past uh, year and a half. The thing here is that uh, once you've joined the game, the cockpits will, will sync and uh, they will reconfigure themselves to match uh, the, their current setups with the uh, master being kind of the leader of the switches if something is out of place. So first of all, if we now take a look at the other panel here, we can see that um, if I, for example, want to start executing checklists, so the pre-launch checklists where the commander has to do some switches on, on, on the commander's side, you see that I can hit those switches up. If I now look at the other computer, I will actually see this immediately taking, uh, reflecting the, the setup that I've, I've requested. The other thing that we could do now is that if we want to then, for example, go ahead and uh, set up the computer, uh, if I turn that on, for example, we can then see that um, the computer has been turned on. Uh, but if I will now turn on the, the input and the display uh, MDU on the other computer, you can see that the switch flipped up by itself. It joins it in the middle of the startup sequence. I can also let the uh, pilot execute the rest of uh, the pilot site's checklist and you can see that the switches are now going up uh, as I'm placing this on the other computer. But my setup is that I have uh, my main computer in the front of me here and then I have uh, the um, uh, laptop next to me that is the, uh, the, uh, the commander. The commander is now turning on the power systems as well and, and executing the checklist on, on the commander's side. The last thing is that we want to to switch on the computer. So if I now go to the commander side just for demonstration purpose, I'm going to set the other player to start the computer. There we go. The computer is started, the light is green and the alignment is, uh, is taking shape. The attitude indicator is rotating basically to to align it to the correct uh, azimuth to reach a set inclination. Uh, I'm also going to turn on the attitude indicator light and uh, maybe even configure some other lighting just to, to demonstrate all of this magically happen uh, outside my own control. 
So everything that's left to do now is to execute the launch itself. Uh, we can use time scaling uh, to uh, to speed up time. And the only person who can uh, control time scale is the the host or the master, uh, also named as the commander. And uh, you can see that the time is now uh, scaling and it's about 15, 14, 13 seconds left to ignition. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. And now everything is pulling up, uh, pressure is building, and uh, the the engines are running. One of the things that uh, we forgot was to turn on the computer. So you can see that I quickly fixed that on the other computer, debugging live if uh, something would be forgotten. The computer was uh, set to ascent and started immediately. immediately. Uh, in the next demo, uh, I'm currently now in orbit and I'm um, getting very close to the Agena uh, target vehicle. And uh, from the other computer now, I'm going to be uh, configuring um, the attitude control. So you can see that I can turn on and off the OMS and uh, uh, set the different modes of operation. Everything goes by itself. You can see that if I hover something with my mouse cursor, it's being um, uh, highlighted. But obviously that's not going to happen for the other player uh, on my computer. So now we're in uh, rate command and um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Just to make sure that I see everything uh, here. And then I'm going to also turn on the attitude indicator lights. There we go. And I'm doing everything on the other computer. And now uh, I'm going to let the other computer navigate uh, to zero out those um, uh, error needles on the uh, attitude indicator. So, a good view. And everything is now being controlled by the other player on the other computer. Obviously, it's. Uh, It's harder to control than normal because I'm looking at two different computers and then my main computer. There we go. And you can see that uh, Agena is now uh, centered um, uh, in front of the, the spacecraft. And I can use the OMS to, to translate forward. I'm still doing everything on the, the other computer. It's going to try and keep sync of a lot of the orbital mechanics, and that's going to be kind of the main job on this once development actually starts uh, to sync everything perfectly. And that's going to take time to, to develop and figure out, and uh, that's also the, one of the key things that I'm questioning: like, is it even possible? However, uh, as a co-pilot, uh, assistant, and uh, with some of these artifacts. Uh, which probably can be eased out by just interpolating the values from the master and the client, uh, will make this look uh, quite good. And especially maybe even good enough uh, for this uh, research thing. But now you can see that we're approaching the, the Agena target vehicle. And everything is being now controlled. Uh, obviously remotely and not from my computer at all. So I'm just looking out the window. And if I would be more realistic about it, I would probably go into this window instead. Use this view. And I'm going to close the docking. I'm also going to uh ask the commander to extend the index uh, bar. This would be vice versa uh, during normal operations, uh, but since I'm using two computers at the same time, it's a little bit hard. But uh, I'm going to move the, the view a little bit to 
to so you can see the index bar. I'm just going to stabilize the, the craft a little bit. And then on the other computer, I'll uh, extend the index bar. There it comes up. Now everything should be ready to perform the docking itself. So now I'm just going to close in and perform the, the final docking. There we go. Docking complete. So yeah, that was uh, the Chevney co-op demo that I had uh, show for you uh, today. Uh, as mentioned a few times, this is in re research and development. Uh, main development haven't yet started. It's going to be something that I'm going to look into after the 1.0 release as a technical preview towards 2.0. And uh, I've not yet decided if this is possible or not, but as you saw in the video and everything was a, li a live demo with its uh, works and it was the real deal. Uh, so uh, you saw the current state of it and uh, I'll need to figure out, you know, what is the good enough state uh, for me to uh, be able to say that okay this is something that I want to be part of the game or not. The, the biggest issue here is uh, the sheer amount of uh, velocity and the uh, big um, you know sizes in that needs to be synchronized uh, which changes uh, very frequently way faster than you know it's possible to to send those data with a delay to another computer and so on. So there needs to be some interpolation in place and uh, uh, with a complex set of, of the re-entry game by itself, uh, makes it really hard to, do, to, to make this happen. But I would say that uh, it's a lot of fun to play it as it is right now, even though with uh, some of the, the offsets in, in positioning and, and some shaking here and there. So it, it might be uh, uh, something that uh, uh, will will work. It, it seems so, but uh, it's yet to be decided. Uh, but a technical preview, uh, it will be nevertheless. So um, once we are getting past that 1.0 milestone, uh, I will look into uh, closing this technical preview out and uh, handing, uh, hand it out to you on the, the alpha branch to make sure that uh, we can start start testing it properly. So with that, uh, we are now going to look into the next post uh, 1.0 feature. And uh, this feature is something that I've been uh, really excited about. And uh, it's also something that I made uh, over the last few years uh, during downtimes. Down um, and that's uh, something that will build upon your knowledge of the command module. So learning the command module in the Apollo program is hard and it takes a lot of time and uh, currently there's quite a lot to do in Apollo but once you've done you know completed a full lunar mission with the, the landing and everything uh, what's next and uh, one of the things that I wanted to do was to uh, create uh, something that will let you um, uh, use the knowledge that you you learned around the command module to do something new and uh, uh, this also is part of the, you know, improving the existing things. So in order to do this, uh, I will need to add some more systems and I will need to improve a lot of the, the weaknesses that you currently see in the computer in order to perfectly, you know, uh, perform random and so on. But that's, uh, uh, and that's the, the uh, Saturn 1B launch vehicle. So uh, in this uh, next demo, we are going to take a look at uh, what this looks like in re-entry.
So for those of you who are familiar with the uh, Apollo command module, I hope that uh, this is uh, some good and fun news. Uh, obviously, it's not too much to it. Uh, however, uh, as you saw, we have uh, both the Saturn 1B launch vehicle that will send you into an orbit of an inclination of around 50 degrees, uh, which will be a different uh, orbit than your typical uh, trajectory around Earth. So, you know, the scenery and, and uh, how it looks when you look down on Earth will be different than, you know, what you're used to. Uh, in addition, you can then rendezvous, as you saw, with the Skylab. Uh, obviously, you cannot enter Skylab, but it's a good uh, uh, activity to do with the command module. Uh, get up there, uh, rendezvous, and perform docking, uh, just like you're used to in, uh, in Gemini, but with the, the tools that you have available for Apollo. Uh, both of the docking ports on the Skylab are active, so you can actually dock with both the, the docking port in front that you saw in the video and the one on the, the kind of uh, bottom side of uh, the Skylab uh, station. Let's uh, proceed with uh, the next thing.
So I started working on the space shuttle back in uh, mid-2019. And uh, I've been using this as a playground to experiment with uh, different technologies uh, for re-entry and also trying to learn the, sh uh, the shuttle in, in detail. And uh, the module itself is not yet that planned. Um, the basic functionality is there and a lot of switches are working, but there's uh, still a lot to do when it comes to both uh, core systems and uh, the computer systems, etc. Uh, however, uh, the main goal of uh, the space shuttle in re-entry is to have a similar approach to the other ones uh, where uh, gamification and some simplification is key to make it even possible for me to add this module to re-entry. And uh, that's the plan for uh, the space shuttle model, module as well. Uh, and hopefully uh, it can, you know, teach you the basics of how to fly the space shuttle and how it operates uh, so that you can bring your knowledge into, for example, other simulations uh, such as, uh, you know, uh, Orbiter or uh, Flight Gear, the, the shuttle uh, add-on for Flight Gear, etc. So that is everything that I wanted to talk about today. And um, I do hope that you liked the, the presentation and um, uh, thank you again for playing re-entry and for your interest in this project.